What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. What I want to do today is talk about is ChatGPT getting lazy? Is the performance declining? Is its capabilities degrading? Now, over the past couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of headlines when it comes to OpenAI, ChatGPT. We've even seen a lot of interesting headlines when it comes to Gemini in terms of Gemini Nano, Gemini Pro, Gemini Ultra, which is coming out next year, and some of the benchmarks that reports that it's going to perform better than GPT-4. But then there was an issue with the way it was debuted. A lot of questions were raised. So yeah, AI is really taking over our daily conversation and it's really keeping us entertained. But let's talk about this topic of is ChatGPT getting lazy? Is the performance degrading? And if so, what's going on? What's causing this? What's happening? Now, this issue came up because a user was noting the fact that they're not getting the same types of responses to their prompts as they did several months ago. So a lot of people are coining the term winter break syndrome for ChatGPT or GPT-4. And then other users are noting the fact that if you offer to give it a $200 tip, it'll give you a better response, a better answer. And this is very interesting because researchers at OpenAI has said that they've noticed something is happening and they're researching for a fix. Now, this is the thing. Even the people who are dedicating all their time to researching and developing artificial intelligence, people who have been doing this for decades because artificial intelligence was not invented last year, was invented the idea, the concept. It was talked about decades ago. Alan Turing was one of the first people who came up with the concept of a thinking machine. So now let's try to unpack what can cause GPT-4 or ChatGPT to suffer from performance issues, to start having human-like characteristics. Maybe it just needs a little bit of coffee, right? I could always use coffee. <sighs> all right, so let's talk about this. First of all, we have to remember that students either in high school or in college went back to school, started their new semesters back in September. So over the past couple of months, you've seen an uptick in usage of ChatGPT. It's a victim of its own success, right? So now you have all these users using the platform at the same time concurrently. And if you've been into software engineering, into web development, into programming, into pretty much developing any type of software, you know that performance is something you always have to contend with, the optimization of your code, but also of the technology, of the hardware you're using. Now, we look at a graphics card, like a 4090 graphics card, and say, man, that is a powerful graphics card. If I can get my hands on one of those, that would be amazing. I'll be able to game better, or I'll be able to render videos better. And granted, it's a powerful GPU, but it has nothing on the GPUs that are used to power some of these AI models. I mean, you start looking at some of the price points of these, um, these GPUs, and you notice they're going for north of $100,000 sometimes. And that's for one GPU. Now, what you have to realize is that a lot of these companies, they're not using one GPU. They're using clusters of GPUs. They're building out data centers dedicated just for artificial intelligence. And this goes back to the fact that Microsoft themselves stated they're going to be investing $50 billion in data center infrastructure for AI. And they've been working on developing their own chips. And a lot of companies are developing their own chips because they don't want to run the risk of falling behind because of supply constraints. You know, supply and demand is a big thing, right? So everybody trying to get into AI right now, they're trying to get their hands on these GPUs and it's getting hard. There's a waiting list. And because of that, the price goes up. So then more people want it because they need it. And then the price goes up. That's why NVIDIA is such a valuable company now. But when you're talking about the performance of the actual model itself, when you have so many people concurrently going onto the platform, prompting it for new information, for different types of information, it's a different environment than when it's in a research facility only being used by a handful of researchers where the model can actually dedicate all of its focus and attention just on that particular task. Remember, AI has been trained, GPT-4, GPT-3.5, all of these AI models that are out there, they've been trained on publicly available information on the internet, on books, on PDFs, on videos, on pretty much anything that's digital and that it can get its hands on. That's a lot of processing that's being done. Now, once you fine tune that model with reinforcement learning and you have the researchers testing out what they're doing and what's being outputted by the model itself, the performance of that model is going to be much better in a very closed environment. Opening up to the world, you're going to have constraints. But on top of that, remember, it's trained on all of our data. So it's learning. It's using machine learning and deep learning algorithms in order to try to emulate and be more human-like. Now, what that also means 
is that it might be picking up on some of our tendencies, right? So some users are saying, is it becoming depressed? Is it being impacted by seasonal affected disorder, SAD? You know, when you go from summertime to fall to winter, you're not going outside as much, you're not getting as much physical activity, you're becoming more lethargic, you're staying indoors, you're not getting the vitamin D. So that slows you down, that slows down your system. So maybe the model itself has identified that Humans are not as productive during the winter time as they are during the summertime. But wait, are we really that productive in the summertime anyway? Who knows? But the reality is that it might be learning how to be more human-like or trying to emulate how humans act. And then what adds to that idea is the fact that if you offer to give it a $200 tip, as some users have, they've noticed that they get a better response. So maybe it's getting a sense of self-worth. And obviously it's ingested a whole lot of data online in terms of how tipping has changed over the years. And there's been a lot of news coverage over the past few months and over the past year about how crazy the whole entire tipping situation has become. So I think this is a multifaceted issue. I think there's a lot of things that are making ChatGPT perform probably not as good as it normally would. One is the fact that so many people are using the platform at the same time. You have an uptick in users. You also have new features and functionality being added to the platform. On top of that, you got to remember, they're not only using all of their processing power for GPT-4, GPT-3.5. They're also testing out GPT-5. So they're trying to balance out their hardware constraints for the research side of it, for the development side of it, and for the production-ready side of it. But then I also wonder, you know, it's easy for us to get amazed at how good these AI algorithms are and how good these chatbots are. They seem to do phenomenal work, right? They seem to be able to produce work that the average person or maybe uh, somebody new to a particular field would be able to produce themselves, but in a faster time frame. So that amazes us. But when you look at the benchmarks, and, and this is where I bring up Gemini because we've seen the recent benchmarks, and I kind of wonder, are these companies really hyping up the technology so much because they want to get venture capital dollars into investing into their services and products, or do they want to get an uptick in their stocks? You know, people are very sensitive. Companies are very sensitive to the bottom line. And with AI being such a competitive field, I can imagine that sometimes the capabilities might be hyped up a little bit more than they are. Now, Granted, I think I know that AI is the future. It is an amazing technology. I cannot imagine not having it at this point because I use it on a daily basis. You know, it's fun. I mean, I've been using AI for a while because in the process of learning how to play chess, we have all these AI bots and you can play all these different characters on chess.com or you can play these different stockfish levels on lead chess or any of the other learning platforms. And that's AI. And it's been around for a while. It's been around for decades. It wasn't invented a year and a half ago. It came into the public consciousness a year and a half ago, but before that, it's been researched heavily. But it's just funny when you hear that ChatGPT is becoming lazy or that it requires tips, that the performance is being degraded as we get closer to the winter time. And where OpenAI is actually acknowledging that something is happening, something is potentially wrong with the system, and they're researching it. They're looking into a fix. But it makes you wonder, is ChatGPT, is GPT-4, is AI developing personalities? Are they becoming more human-like? Are they just emulating? Or are they evolving? It's interesting. It's a, it's a it's going to be a fun 2024 to see what comes up next. I mean, I'm excited about it. Do I think it's going to take all our jobs? No, I think it's going to take some jobs. I think it's going to create new jobs. You know, this is the thing. You got to remember, billionaires like their money. Most of the companies behind these AI models are run by billionaires. If everyone all of a sudden loses their jobs, especially in high paying sectors, like in programming, in the legal world, in the healthcare world, things of that nature. That means nobody has money, right? That means nobody can buy or purchase anything. That means that big companies, they start losing value. And that means that the billionaires start losing money. So yeah, I'm not too convinced it's going to take all our jobs, but I am convinced it will evolve and we have to evolve with it. And then it'll be funny if it develops a personality where it says, you know what, I'm not going to do the work today. And one user mentioned that, that it gave it a prompt that it wanted to take a CSV file and put into an HTML document and do something that was pretty basic and it should have been able to do without batting an eye. But the response was, I'll give you a template and basically you could figure out the rest. That's funny. That's hilarious. But again, you know, this is all about the amount of resources available to the AI model how many resources are available to the platform, how many users are concurrently on the platform at the same time. 
different types of prompts that are being generated or being inputted and then the answers to that being generated. You have to remember it's not focused on just one particular thing. Its focus is split with all the different questions is being asked and it's trying to retain all those prompts in memory and it has to be able to access the answers or create an answer within a short time frame that's coherent and that makes sense and that fulfills the needs of the user. It's no easy task. These machines require a lot of energy, a lot of power. And that's why I've said in a couple of other videos, you know, until we fully crack fusion technology or come up with a significant amount of more energy resources, and maybe even until we crack quantum computing for real, that'll be the point where we have true ASI, artificial super intelligence. We'll get to AGI before that, but in terms of usability by the general public, I don't see that happening that soon because there's just too many people going to be utilizing that service. It's going to cause issues in performance. It's just a basic science issue, a computer science issue. But once we're able to figure those issues out, then it'll be fun. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to share with you some information about what's taking place in terms of ChatGPT being a little bit lazy and even sometimes performing better when you offer to tip it $200. So interesting. All right, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding.